Hey, church. Look at this. Looks like we're showing up for church today. That's awesome. Hey, um, we're closing, or not closing up, we're, we're in our series, Miracle Grow, which is all about spiritually growing in Jesus Christ. And today is having a balance in your life, a true balance in your life. And so why don't you guys grab a Bible or a device and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. Uh, it's part of the first five books of the Bible. And turn there. If I'm walking a little gingerly, a little different, it's because I joined ALC Soccer League. That <clears throat> did that. And I can say this. I was pretty proud. I, uh, I um, was probably the fifth or sixth best player, uh, which is pretty impressive. But because of the rain, there was actually only six players. So... so uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, you can take that for how you want to. Want to. But man, uh, uh, it, it was just so much fun. It was just fun going out there and just showing these young bucks awesomeness. That's what I had to do. No. Hey, uh, hey uh, in, in, in something that's real is you remember a couple weeks ago we said, hey, we decided, the, our, our leadership board said, let's, let's buy the bunk beds for Saji and, and the Johns Foundation in India for the girls' homes out there, and we're trying to buy 100 bunk beds, and so that would raise $5,000 to do that, and so I just want you guys to know, we did it, boom, one day, one day we did that, and so we were sending that money out, and uh, Saji just said, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But another cool thing he did on the email, he said, Bruce, because you know we have our Authentic Life girls' home. It's ours, right? Ten girls. Uh, all of them are, are children that were born from sex, those that were sex trafficked, and they don't know what to do with them. And so Saji takes, takes them in. And, you know, there's like a thousand girls on this campus and boys, but uh, uh, we have our own girls' home. Well... He sent this. He said, Bruce, four of your girls are graduating from high school, and there they are right there. Now, their high school goes to 10th grade, and so these girls are all graduating, and that's their GPAs. If you can see their grade points, they do it on a, where we do it on a four point, they do it a 10 scale. So 9.7, she, uh, uh, Shia was actually the valedictorian of her class. So that was our girls. Those are our, those four girls. So they're actually going to be moving on and going on to uh, a trade school. And then they're going to, we're going to get four new, new girls who are going to be jumping on into our home. So pray about that and pray for them. Hey, uh, so, you know, if your tires are out of balance on your car, it's going to maybe do a couple things. One of them, you're going to wear them down much quicker. The tires are going to wear down much quicker. If they're out of balance, it could also got, get you a little bit rickety when, when you're driving. It's just not a little bit more erratic, not quite, quite as good. And that's true not only with tires, but it's also true when you're out of balance. If you're out of balance in your life, then you're going to wear down quicker. If you're out of balance in your life, you're going to have more of a rickety type of life. Things aren't going to always go the way you want to. Uh, when you want to turn, things aren't quite as good. And so what, what, what I realize is that that could be physical. If you're out of physical balance, you know, you get some of these guys, they've done all this workout on their upper body, but then somehow they forgot about their legs. You know, they look like Arnold Schwarzenegger up here, and they look like little chicken McNugget legs down at the bottom. You know, you ever see that? Because they're out of balance, out of balance in that. Or even just any type of physical. If we're not really in good shape, we're going to be out of balance, you know. Um, but or, or, or let's take working. If you're out of balance in your work life, like you work way too many hours and not enough rest, you're not going to be, you're going to wear down quicker, right? Or what about spiritual? Spiritual, if you're out of whack spiritually, you're going to be out of balance. And so that's what we're going to look at today. And so before we go any further, uh, let's pray. But we're doing Miracle Grow, and today is having a true balance in life. Let's pray. Lord God, you're good. You're awesome. Thank you for uh, the way you love your people, love us. Uh, so we just pray because we do want to have a proper balance in our spiritual walk that we can uplift you properly. And we just want to honor you and give you thanks and bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to jump right in. If you're taking notes, our very first point that we're going to look at is this, is that there must be, if you want a balance in your life, there must be a balance in how I live for God. So I'm going to explain this, but how I live for God, 
There needs to be a balance in that. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I know I'm a little bit different than, than a lot of people. I was one of those when I came to Jesus, uh, you know, totally out of in, in drug, drugs and alcohol. But when I came to Jesus, I hook, line, and sinker. I was able to quit everything right away. I went to three Bible studies a week. I went to church every Sunday and, and, and never really missed unless I was on vacation or something like that. And I've kept that my whole life. But I know that people can look at me as a pastor and go, well, yeah, uh, it, since you're a pastor, you must have great quiet times all the time. And because you're a pastor, you must always learn, be trust, trusting of God. Because you're a pastor, uh, you, you probably read your Bible all the time and you know, all these different things. And, and though that isn't really true, I'm saying this because we often have it mixed up. It isn't that I'm a pastor, therefore I trust God. It's be, I trusted God. And therefore, I, and I, I read my Bible and I went to church. Therefore, I became a pastor. In other, in other words, I have a lot of trust and my faith in God. And he's been punishing me ever since. Um, being, being a pastor. Boo, that was a boo. And, and the thing is, is that we have to get how we live for God. And we need to live for him and live with him in our life in such a real way that good things are happening. And so what I want to do is give you two different contrasting uh, groups of people that, G that Jesus uh, confronts in a good way. And we're going to start with this. We're going to get to Deuteronomy in, in ver uh, uh, point number two. But right now, why don't we look at this Matthew verse, Matthew four eighteen? As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets, and they followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their, their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. Now notice that these guys really don't even know where Jesus is going to be leading them. He just says, come follow me. And they drop everything. And they trust him. And they go on. Like they, they don't know that Jesus is going to get crucified. They don't know he's going to rise from the grave. John right there has no idea that he's going to write the gospel of John. He has no idea that he's going to be the, the author of the book of Revelation. You know, Peter had no idea he was going to be the rock that the church would, church would be founded in, that he'd be in Rome, and that they'd reach, well, a zillion people for Jesus Christ over the masses of years. They had no idea when Jesus called them that that's what's going to happen. But that's what trust does, you know, and it makes them an opportunity to live for God. But, but let's contrast this with another person that Jesus calls to follow him. Uh, Matthew 19. Verse 16 through 22, just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? As if you can earn your salvation. Why do you ask me about what is good, Jesus said. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandment. Well, which ones, he inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, all these I have kept, the young man said, what do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. See those same words. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Same thing. Jesus says, come follow me. Drop everything. Sell everything. Because that's what's keeping you from the kingdom of God. Your wealth. You're, you're all about your money and whatever. And he says, get rid of it. Follow me. Watch what's going to happen. This young man could have been part of the story. He could have ended up being one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He could have been somebody who, who did great things for the kingdom, but instead he walked away because he didn't trust the heavenly father. Well, he didn't trust Jesus. And he loses everything. Here's a contrast. You get the disciples. They drop everything and they follow Jesus. And they end up being part of changing the world. The other guy was afraid to drop everything. And he just gets the same old, same old. But he had before. And he missed out. What about you? Are you living for God? 
Because I'm going to tell you, you're out of balance if you're not living for God. If you're not living for Jesus, I don't mean just like you, you receive Jesus and he comes into your life. I'm saying living for, stepping out in faith, allowing Jesus to do something miraculous in you all the time. Are you living for God? Because if you're not, you're out of balance, you know, and so we need to do that. Uh, I, I don't remember where I got this quote, this famous one, but, but it says this, the greatest place I will ever be is in the center of God's will. The greatest place I will ever be is when I'm in the center of God's will. It might be in, in a hospital. It might be, you know, uh, being a truck driver. It might, it might be uh, that, that you're, you're not, uh, you're, you got broken legs or something. But as long as you're in the center of his will, that's the best place you could possibly be. I, I'm going to bring up a second point. So first, we need to live for God to be in balance, but there, there must be a balance in how I learn about God. We, we, we need to be able to grow. We need to learn about God. You know, if you take, you take miracle Grow and you just kind of put it up on a shelf and you never apply it to your roses, you never put it on your plants, it does nothing, right? You got miracle Grow, but you sit down and go, why aren't you putting that on your plants? Because you go, look how pretty my miracle Grow looks up on that shelf. It's got pictures of roses and flowers. It's so, it's just nice. No, nothing's going to happen. Your yard could look disgusting. We got miracle grow up there. In the same way, a lot of us, we put our Bible up on our shelf and we're like, yeah, at least I got it, man. Doesn't it look nice? That's a good looking Bible. Unless you're reading it, unless you're applying it to your life, it doesn't do much good at all. You know, oh, well, God's got to be really proud of me because I got a Bible. He has to be proud of me. Really? We must apply that, and we need to grow. And there's different ways of being able to grow. And, and what I want to do is look at our verse in Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6, and we're going to start with verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now look at that. What, what's sitting there saying is that there's just lots of different ways to grow. Talk about them. Talk to your children. Talk about them when you're sitting at home. Talk about God and, and, and his word when you're walking along the road. You know, tie them onto your wrist and put, put them on your forehead so that you can just constantly be thinking about God. So here's the thing, if you're writing some things down. Uh, because I'm designed to learn in multiple ways, I must actually get God's truth into my life in multiple ways. I'm going to say that again. Because I'm actually designed to learn in multiple ways, I must get God's word into my, his truths into my life in multiple ways. And so we're going to break that down in just a second. But I, I, want, to, I want to first do an announcement. Summer Bible studies start this Wednesday. When do they start? This Wednesday. And we have guys groups and we have women's groups. Uh, my wife and some other ladies are, are leading the, the, the women's groups. And, 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 and here I'm here to say this. And Pastor Brian's leading uh, the, the men's groups. But again, they, they break off. You get to meet new people. You get to fellowship. And you need to grow together, which is such a cool thing to be able to do. But as of now, we have almost 150 people signed up, which is awesome, of all different age groups. But you know what? It's not going to be as good if you're not there. And I want to encourage you to, to be a part of this and, and to grow in the summer Bible studies. And, and uh, they're just, just a way of doing that. You know, we're a church of life groups, so we do life groups for nine months of the year. But we take a break from life groups in order to do summer Bible studies to grow. And so I want to use that kind of as an illustration of how God wants us to learn. So we're going to look at four different ways that God utilizes and, and how we can really grow. And the first one is this, is that we learn by hearing God's truth. So right now you're hearing God's truth. So you're, you're learning, hopefully, you know, unless your eyes are closed. But, but, but we, 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 we have uh, learned by hearing God's word. But guess what? When you hear a sermon like this, it's one of the least effective ways of actually 
getting into our souls and our hearts, believe it or not. Because studies show that the average person, that most of all of us, let's just say all of us, forget 95% of everything we hear within 72 hours. So right here, I'm preaching to you, and you're sitting there going, yeah, so why am I here if I'm not going to remember any of this? But, but you know, you ever notice how you, you go, yeah, I'm going to make that commitment. Pastor Bruce really got this going. I'm going to make that commitment. And you walk out in the parking lot, and you forget everything, right? You get home, and you forget even more. And then within a couple of days, you're like, yeah, I don't I, I, what, what did he preach about? I mean, I don't even remember what I preached about last week. Well, I didn't preach last week. Pastor Mark did, and he did an awesome job. The, uh, uh, so we, 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 we learn by hearing God's truth, but we need to have that. that he, he invented church. You know, God invented church. He wanted this to be happening. It's always been preachers, and so it's part of it, but it's not enough. So there's a second, second form is that we learn by reading God's truth. So we, 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 we got to read, we got to take Miracle Grow Bible off the shelf and actually open it up. We need to read. And so if you think about it, when we do these summer Bible studies, so we're hearing, you know, because there's going to be some things, and, and uh, the women's has a video curriculum. You're going to be hearing uh, preachers and stuff. And, and then, but we also read because there's booklets, and you get to read the truth. And that actually helps us grow, you know. But guess what? We forget 95% of everything we read. So here we go. We put them both together. Now we're finally at 10%, right? We, we get to read and we get to hear. We're at 10 percenters. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but we need to, we need to go a little bit more. And that's, that's why I, 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 I think reading and having quiet times, opening up your Bible, uh, spending some time in, in, in that is so important. Not just summer Bible studies. Our, our life groups are based on the same thing, you know. But, but look at what happens here at church. You reading scripture, you're hearing scripture, and you're forgetting it. So let's go on to a third form of, of learning, is that we also learn by discussing God's truth. When we talk about it, guess what? We now move up to another 50%. We remember 50% of things that we discuss. I don't know, maybe we like hearing ourselves talk or, or when other people are talking, we get to engage with it. It, it actually grows us better, you know, kind of working both those things together. And so, uh, and, and that's why I, even when my wife and I, we talk about the Lord a lot. Uh, we, we take that scripture seriously. When you're walking, when you're sitting, when you're, when you're hanging out, bring Jesus into it, bring the gospel. I love talking to my wife about God. She's passionate, and she gets me passionate. She's knowledgeable. So then I feel like I better be become more knowledgeable, you know? But, but the same thing with each and every one of us uh, talking to each other. Or again, if we take summer Bible studies, there's going to be discussion time, and you get to interact with each other and grow. So, but then there's a, 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 a fourth one. We learn by living out God's truth. We learn by living out God's truth. You remember that part in Deuteronomy where it said, um, tie them to your wrists and bind them onto your foreheads? Well, in time, because a lot of the Jews were legalists, the Pharisees and different people would take that literally and they would actually, you might even see in some of the movies, you might see these people with a little, like a little booklet that, that, that they have on their forehead and, and, or on their wrist. And, 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 and that's taking it literally. Oh, I'm supposed to bind it. You know, somehow that doesn't, no. What God's really saying there is he's saying, I want your wrist, which represents your, your actions. I want you, God's word to be in your actions. And I want it to be in your brain. I want it to be so, not, you know, so memorizing scripture would be, would be a better way of saying that. And so here's what's going on here, is that for us to grow, you know, we need to be able to ha live out our faith. And, and, and by the end of this service, we're going to call up our next generation missionaries uh, send off. We, we literally have, I, I, gosh, I don't know, it looked like the last service, like 50 of our students from our, our fifth and sixth graders to our middle school, our high school, and our young adults ministries are all doing missions trips this summer. And so we're going to call them up here and we're going to pray over them and bless their socks as they bless us also. Pretty cool. But what, what are they doing? They're living out their faith. Why are we such a church that cares about serving? 
You know, we, we constantly are, are saying, you know, get into the ministry, serve. Do you think it has to do, I mean, we do need volunteers. We do need people to serve. That's how our church works. But do you think that's really the big reason why we're constantly pounding on you to, get, to serve? No, we're asking you to serve because you need to serve. We're asking you to give because you need to be a giver. We're asking you to do it. God's going to take care of us financially, whether you want to be participate in giving or not. But man, it's so much better for you to be a part of that, you know, and, and ministry-wise and serving. That's why all that, to live out my faith is so important. If you're not living out your faith, then you're not really learning. And I'm going to say something. Those first three, reading uh, or, or hearing God's word, reading God's word, and discussing God's word is all great. But that's learning, that's learning about God. And living out is very different. I'm going to tell you this. If you only know about God, then you don't have a love relationship with God. You, lots of people can know all these things about God. But until you live it out, then you don't get to experience the truths of God. And that's just so important to be able to do. So, so that's good. You want to have balance in your life, spiritual balance, and you need to you know, learn but live out your faith, right? So do each of those. And then my, my last point is this. There must be a balance on how I love God. There needs to be a balance on how I live for God. There needs to be a balance on how I learn about God. But man, there has to be this balance in my life to where I really have the love of God is not just something I'm experienced, but I'm actually living out. Let, let's look at Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 again. And we're going to start with verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. You know, if you only know about God, then you're not going to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. You, you got head knowledge, but you don't. And, and I'm going to say it. You have to step out. We must step out in trust and in faith to be able to do that. You'll never be satisfied in your spiritual walk. You won't if you're not applying these things in there and growing in such a way. If you only know about him, again, you're not going to grow to love him. And he wants so much more. I want, I want to love God with all my heart. I want to, with my soul who I am deep down inside and with all my strength and my power and my, my, my loving him and serving him. And that's a good thing to do. And each of us need to be able to do that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I shared about things going on with my mom. Um, I know not everybody was, was here, but basically um, uh, I, my mom was in a hospital, but, but really the bulk of what I was trying to get across was how hard trying to get her on Medicaid and how we ended up having to where it took so many months longer than they said that uh, and and uh, we had me and Melissa had to take over the payment of the nurses because she has in-home care nurses and that was about fifteen hundred dollars a week and so we had to take uh, a loan out of our house and and doing all this different stuff and 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 I appreciate but it seems I come to church and lots of people, are, they ask me, how's your mom? How's your mom? Let me say, my mom's going to be the same. This is, this is going to be a long road, you know, whatever. The point of the story, because I don't want to keep answering, because I don't want to come to church, and, and I, I want this to be a victorious place, and I want to just, just, just be able to be loved and love you guys. And so I appreciate people asking me. But the bulk of what I was trying to get across was that, that even in the midst of our bad circumstances, God is still good. That, he, that I can still trust in him even when things are going awry. And so I don't want anybody to miss that. It wasn't about my mom. It was about that I've never been this stressed. I've never been this anxious. And I usually don't know what to do with anxiety. I've never really had anxiety. I've, I've been gifted with the ability to ignore things. And, and so, so, but now I can't. I, that was, was so freaky for me. I couldn't ignore anything. You know, I have to be invested in this. I mean, all this different stuff. But here's the thing. If you want to love me as your pastor, then grow. This is what I'm asking. 
I don't need anybody to ask me about my mom. I don't need anybody to say, have you got, is the Medicaid still working? I don't need to know anything. What I want, if you want to love me as your pastor, if you want to care for me as your pastor, then grow. Grow spiritually. Grow, 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 grow. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier or it makes me more anxious than knowing that if the church isn't growing, if we're not spiritually being fed, if, if you're, not, you're not taking the own initiative. So what, this is what I'm asking. Take the initiative. Get your Bibles out. Read. Get your quiet times. Get your marriages together. You know, grow spiritually. You know, take a missions trip. Again, the, the adults are going to go to India in November. We also have a Mexico house building that's coming up. And, and just all these things grow. If you want to be kind to me, grow. So to truly grow, we can't just know about God. We have to experience God, period. To truly have a balanced life, we need to live for God. We need to learn about God in various ways, and we need to um, live out our faith in various ways. But we also need to love God, not just know about him, but to love him. What we're going to do is we're going to get ready for communion. If you miss getting your communion cups, there's some over here on the sides that you can grab. Uh, otherwise, let's all pull out our, our communion cups. You know, when Jesus called those disciples, and they had no idea what was going to go on. And all of a sudden, everything's going really, really well, and they're in the upper room. And it's the night before Jesus is going to be crucified. In fact, he's going to be taken that night to be arrested. They had no idea. And then all of a sudden, Judas gets up out of his seat as they're all getting ready to eat and, and, and celebrate the Passover. And Jesus says, go do what you must do. And Judas goes and betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. On that same night, Jesus gathers them all together after they had their meal. And he said, this bread represents my body that's going to be broken for you. Now, I'm sure their jaws were dropping. What, 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 what does he mean by that? And then he then takes the cup and he says, this represents my blood that's going to be shed for you. And they're like, what? Now, then maybe they're getting the picture because the Passover lamb was given for the sins of Israel. But I think they had no idea what it was really going to mean. What, what we're going to do before we take communion is it's all about reflection. And I'm just going to ask you to reflect and so we're going to have some moments. I'm, I'm going to be quiet for a while. And the music's just going to be in the background. But I want you to reflect. Are you growing? Do you, are you willing to do what it takes to grow? Are you willing to sacrifice for him? And also maybe be thankful for the sacrifice that he covered your sins. And so I'm going to give you a couple minutes just to talk to God in your own words. And then we're going to take communion together. of his betrayal Jesus said this bread and why don't you open up your cup this bread is my body and when you're together and, and, and you take this I want you to take it in remembrance of me remembrance of what I'm doing unlike the disciples we know exactly what he did and that's how we can find salvation so let's just thank him Heavenly Father thank you for this bread that represents your son's body we wish you didn't have to send him for our sins, but we're so thankful you did. Let's take this in remembrance. Now he said in the same way, he said, this drink, this represents my blood. Jesus, thank you for taking on my sin, our sin. Thank you that you said that we 
you're as white as snow. And that's how you see us. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. And we want to honor you by growing. We want to honor you by serving. We want to honor you because you've given us so much. We just thank you. Let's take this cup and remember today. Now that we've taken communion, let's worship God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength.